there's so many phrases that we say that when we say them, they seem okay. But then when you're in a situation and someone says that phrase to you, it's actually very discomforting and not comforting. One of those phrases that kind of drives me mad when I hear it is, time heals all wounds. In today's podcast, I'm going to talk about how time doesn't heal all wounds. And I'm sure that you can relate to what I'm about to say, especially when you've gone through something or you're going through something and someone says that to you in good faith. I mean, they're really trying to comfort you and help you, but it actually ends up being a bit of a discomfort. So I'm your host, Dr. Caroline Leaf, and welcome to my podcast, Cleaning Up the Mental Mess. And as I said, I'm going to be talking about this concept of time doesn't heal all wounds. What does change over time look like? What does it mean? How does it work? And how can we help ourselves when someone says a phrase like that and it throws us off? But before we begin, I just wanted to tell you that if you haven't yet joined my my detox challenge, my 63-day detox challenge, it's not too late. You can still jump on board. It doesn't matter if we are way into this this it's running until the, the the middle of March and you can carry on afterwards anyway and so the detox challenge is basically me walking you through a, a 63 day neurocycle you use my app and I have the inside the app there's a webinar I come out four times a month I come I weekly I basically support you through the app and tell you what my journey is and give you some great tips and guidance to help you manage your mind through whatever you're working on whether it's a habit you're building or if it's something that you're trying to deal with or a bad habit you're trying to break down or a new habit you're trying to build, as I mentioned, or dealing with some kind of trauma, something like that. And there's also special discounts. If you go to the link, um, in the, um, you'll see the link and details in the show notes for the discounts. You can get a big discount on the web version of the app for first-time users. And also, if you like watching me, you can just head over to YouTube and instead of just listening to this podcast, you can actually watch the podcast. So just head over to YouTube and look for Dr. Caroline Leaf. And finally, don't forget, we've got our Brainy Bundle on special, my latest book, How to Help Your Child Clean Up Their Mental Mess, How to Help Your Child Manage Their Mental Health. And the little character that I've created called Brainy, which helps you to help your child understand the challenges of life and trauma and just dealing with day-to-day issues. I've created a little character called Brainy. We've made Brainy into a toy. We've even got a coloring book. This is a great kit for school teachers, for parents, for grandparents for caregivers to help you to help children from the ages of two through 10 to manage their mental health. So head over to drleaf.com and you'll find the link and the details in the show notes to get a, to get your brainy bundle, which is there's a special on that at the moment. So let's get that dive back into the podcast to talk about this concept of time healing all wounds. Well, the Greek poet Menander, who lived around 300 BC, is the apparent source of this phrase with the original being, time is the healer of all necessary evils. It's kind of a contradictory statement though, because time is passing and some things do heal. Like for example, if you have a wound and you get a scab and over time it heals and things do change. You've heard me say that all the time. The moment by moment of every single day, you are experiencing new things and you are changing. Your mind is changing. Your brain is changing. Your body is changing. You're not the same as you were when you started this podcast a few moments, minutes ago. You're always changing. So every moment of every day, you are changing and having new experiences. But the issue is not so much that it will, that there's, a, there's not a guarantee that you're going to heal over time, which is kind of what that phrase implies. It implies that as time passes, you're going to heal. Things will get better. But do they really get better? You are changing. So the key thing here is not the fact that we don't change. We are changing. The key is that do we heal over time or do we get worse over time? Because if you don't deal with your stuff, time is still going, change is still happening, but what's the direction of the change? So what we should be asking, and I think the thing that's contradictory to us when we hear that statement, is not so much the fact that we're changing, it's the direction of the change. Are we getting Are we healing or are we perhaps getting worse? And how do we influence and direct that change so that we can heal and not get worse? And what happens if we don't direct the change? Do we then get worse? And all those kinds of questions. So from the research I've done over the years in psychoneurobiology, the mind is the factor that is the primary factor that changes the brain and changes the body. The mind is driving the brain and the body. That's our psychoneurobiology. So as we talk about changing over time, every experience changing us. It's our mind that processes the experience and 
our mind is changing and therefore our brain is changing because the mind puts it into the brain and puts it into the body. And that's time is passing as that is happening. But what I've also told you a lot about on this podcast is that we can direct that change. So we can consciously and deliberately interact with what is happening in the midst of that change to direct the change. So we can observe the kind of change that's happening and then we can interrupt that change and drive it in the direction that we want it to go in. Now that's kind of a powerful thing. So it's not necessarily that it's just going to happen. Change is going to happen, but change in the right direction is just going to happen because time has passed because that's not necessarily the case. If you have a suppressed, if you have a trauma from the past and you've suppressed it and you've never dealt with it, that's not going away over time. You may feel better over time because time creates space around something, but the core wound is still there. And if you haven't dealt with that, you can be triggered and it can come back again. So that we have to do something to direct the change. Otherwise, it's always going to be there driving us in some way. And get, and that the, the, is the vulnerability that you're going to get triggered because it's still raw and burning fire energy, whatever visual you want to imagine. So a big part of the research that I do is looking at what happens over, what, what's the time frame involved with change? So what is it, you know, what, what, how long does it take to rewire a network, to change a habit, to change a trauma, to build a new habit, all that kind of thing. And I've just published, a, recently published another paper on the work that I'm doing on the psychoneurobiological time frame of what happens, how long it takes and what happens at each of the different phases. And we're doing a big qualitative study at the moment as well, which is under analysis, also writing up a paper soon and all the stuff I'm going to, all the stuff I'm going to be sharing with you on, on a practical level in podcast. But what I can share with you today is that there is a number that we can attach to how we, when we direct change, how, or when we leave change, how, how the networks, how long does it take for a network to become a driver of how we function as a human. And that's more or less nine weeks. And this is confirmed, our research confirms what's already existing research showing that it takes around about somewhere between 59 and 66 days for a habit to form or a habit to be broken and a new one to be rewired for healing to start the, the process of healing from traumas or complex things like complex PTSD, those kinds of things to, to actually happen. So there is change happening over time. And if you direct that change in these cycles of nine weeks, you can consciously and deliberately go through, direct this, this change, you can then direct the direction of the time, of the change over time. So it's not just a random thing that, you know, that change is happening. But if you don't manage it, if you don't manage what's happening in that time, you're not just going to necessarily heal because time has passed. As I said, the time creates the space, but the rawness is still there, that the rawness of whatever that whatever happened is still alive and dynamic and ready to just burst into your life in the wrong time or that habit's going to you know drive you as it's reactivated that kind of thing so what we have to do is use the time deliberately and intentionally to direct the change for the healing to take place which which means literally that you have to go to that raw source of energy what which was the trauma or the maybe not so dramatic the habit wouldn't be such a raw thing but it would be a habit that's driving us in the wrong direction And we have to go and fix that. We have to deconstruct and reconstruct that. And that process is us directing the change over time. And it takes a certain amount of time to do that. It's not going to happen in in just one day or two days. It takes around about 59 to 66 days. So we say around about nine weeks. And if it's a very complex, raw, big, firing, dramatic thing that happened, that um, happened over a period of time or very complex trauma, that will take multiple cycles of um, nine weeks, with each nine week span being something that's happening, moving you in the right direction, but you're directing the change. That's the key thing. If you don't do it, if you don't direct that, if you don't direct the change, the change is still happening, but it's happening in the wrong direction. So let me give you a story to help you understand this. A friend of mine got into a car accident a few years ago, and in the accident, he injured his hand really badly, and he couldn't close his fist. His fist couldn't close. It got stuck in an open position and he just couldn't close it. And so he needed physical therapy to actually make sure that he could, you know, to relearn how to uh, close his fist. Now, if he just gave it time, the hand would not automatically go back into that position. In fact, the hand would keep changing in the direction that it was going, which was the wrong direction. So it become more and more difficult over time for him to form a fist with his hand. But on the other hand, 
if you did some physical therapy, that would definitely help. But if you only did some physical therapy, but didn't do it for the right amount of time, maybe he would get movement in his wrist, in, in his hand, but he wouldn't be able to form a fist. What he had to do was physical therapy in the exercises every day over a long enough period of time to retrain the muscles of the hand to be able to go back into a fist and to be able to open and close. So time didn't heal. A little bit of work didn't heal. But a lot of deliberate and intentional work over time, in other words, directing the change in the right direction that was doing the work, doing the physical therapy over time, changed his hand so that he was able to then form a fist over time. He had to do the work and in doing so, he directed the change. He, and he also did the work in a very specific way. It wasn't just some random thing. It was very deliberate, planned, and intentional. Planned and guided, deliberate and intentional act daily over a period of time. And what I found in my research as well, if we're going to change a habit, if we're going to build a new habit, if we're going to fix something that's got, that we've got, that's kept us stuck and in patterns of behavior that are disruptive coming from whatever, that's, that's, like the first, it's a little bit of is not going to change it. Leaving it's not going to make it go away. And maybe you'll get used to your hand like this over time, but it's certainly not healed. But the deliberate and intentional plan and guided daily work daily over time, that's what's going to change things. So as I said, we are always changing, but we need to direct, manage the direction of change. So managing the change is to understand, for example, that darkness from a painful experience or a trauma will always remain. Your story will always be with you. But how you choose to face it and manage it, that's the important part. The key thing is you embracing, processing, and reconceptualizing. How you choose to manage it, how you choose, in other words, to direct the change, that's what's going to shift the process. That's what's going to get the fist to come back again and keep the hand from being stuck in that pain and that pain driving how you run the rest of your life. So you can't change the fact that you had the accident but you can change what it looks like inside of you so that you can learn to make a fist again. And there's still the memory and it's still maybe a bit sore and still maybe not as good as the fist in this hand or something, but you've changed how it plays out into your future because not being able to make a fist has quite a lot of an impact on your physical movement, just to use that analogy. So without managing the change, over time, the darkness doesn't go away. It will grow, but in the wrong direction. And if it's a big darkness, that growth of that can become all-consuming and it can consume you as a person and really can lead to a very, very broken mind and a very, very unhealthy brain and body and can show up in a very damaged life. But if we direct that change, if we work on the fist as painful as it is, anyone who's gone through any kind of accident and who's had to go through physical therapy can relate to this on a physical level. Well, it's the same thing in our psyche. It's also very hard, as we know. So... However, managing the change over time by entering into that struggle with the darkness, that darkness will eventually dim, enabling you to eventually focus upon the good, the things that will fill you with peace. So if we don't direct the change and we let the darkness stay there, it will consume us. But if we struggle with that darkness and we fight that darkness as painful as it is and as many times as you want to give up, if we keep pushing through, It'll change. And what I found from the research myself and my team is that there's two phases that you go through in the struggle. And the first is it gets worse before it gets better. And it seems to be about the first three weeks that things get so much worse. And then after that, there's a stabilization phase where it gets a little easier, but it's still work. But it's a little bit easier. The second 42 days in that 63-day cycle. So there's still ups and downs. And you'll hit what we see is happening as well is that people tend to hit around 42 days and around 48 days. There can be this, this insight that, oh my goodness, this is what's happened to me. And there's a slight wobble, but then you can get back up on your feet again. So it's almost like you start off being a very rigid, a rigid tree that can snap easily. And as you go through this process over time of deliberate, planned and guided every day and work every day, you, it's by the, by the time you reach, reach the, the, the second phase. And as you go towards the end of the second phase, you've turned into this reed that can bend in the wind, but can, is resilient, can bounce back again. So time without work means the pain may lessen or become less intense, but this is really only a pause on a problem that can come biting back when reactivated through a trigger. 
So if you don't do anything, the change is still happening. And the space that's created from time moving on naturally can create like a pause, maybe reducing the intensity. You get used to this, okay? And you get sort of used to that, but it's still not the same as being able to close your fist, being able to learn how to do that and reactivate it to a trigger. You can have something that can hurt you and then it's very hard to, you get stuck. This keeps you stuck in because you can't do with, with a hand that's stuck like this versus being able to make a fist. You're stuck. You, there's things you can't do and a trigger can reactivate and then it can come biting back. This is why it's so important to do the work. Time heals all wounds is basically a very, very oversimplification of an extremely complex process of healing. Healing is such a complex and individualized process requiring active effort and support to address those emotional wounds effectively that cannot be healed by just taking the time. So what I've done over the years is develop the system for how to do this, which is called the NeuroCycle. And you, if you listen to me or follow me, the NeuroCycle is how we can do, it's that planned and guided approach that you do every day to build a new habit, change the habit, do the healing over time. And it's Within the five steps of the neurocycle, you can, once you under, it's a system. So you can put any technique within that. You know, like, for example, step five is an active reach. If you like positive affirmations, step five is a great place to put positive affirmations. Step one is not a great place to put positive affirmations. So you can use whatever technique, but it's the system of how you, you do the planned and guided. It's what you do every day to get your, your hand to make a fist again. It's the exercise that you do. It's the system. And into that, you're going to put all the new little little exercises within that system. And then that will help you then rewire those networks, then help you to be able to cope. And it's it's hard work and it's sore, but it works. So I hope this has helped you. In order for us to heal, we have to take an inventory of ourselves, our experiences and our pain, and begin finding new ways to accept what we've been through as something that will always be part of our lives. Your story doesn't change. But that does not have to control your lives. This doesn't have to control your life. By doing planned and guided daily work, by learning to sit with that struggle, I actually want to read, just reread this, this sentence to you again. By entering into a struggle with the darkness, that darkness will eventually dim, enabling you to eventually focus upon the good and the wonderful things that will fill your life with peace. Your story won't go away, but you can change what's inside of you in order to change how that plays out into your future. You can make a fist again. If you've enjoyed this, I'd love you to like, subscribe to my podcast, share with friends and family. We all need help. And don't forget to tune in every single week, twice a week when I have these, I do an interview once a week, I teach something in the other session. I'm here, tune in because I'm here to help you and me learn how to manage our minds. And our minds drive everything. Healthy mind, healthy brain, healthy body, healthy life. See you next time.